Those Nicole Kidman AMC ads sure are weird. Y'all heard about this? Hello, and welcome to another episode of A Liar's Guide, the show that was supposed to be me seeing a must-see movie that I've never seen before and telling you everything you need to know in order to believably lie about having seen it too. Today's episode was supposed to be on Redactor, but it's not on a streaming service I have, so I turned to our Discord linked in the description for suggestions on a replacement. Pretty quickly, I started getting some very helpful, thoughtful responses. Gendred, you're a real one. But then, a few assholes decided it might be funny to list seemingly every movie they had ever so much as heard of. Oh, you can just imagine my chuckles as I sat down to sift through the literal hours of responses when suddenly it hit me. Fuck you. Meet the Wheel of Lies. I've painstakingly added every movie suggested to this wheel and now we're gonna give it a spin and whatever it lands on, that's what we're gonna watch. This is the show now. And with that, let's spin that wheel. Night. Check it out. Walking Tall, the 2004 remake of a 1973 film of the same name, loosely based off the true story of Sheriff wow. Buford Pusser, who nearly single-handedly returned justice to the small town of Adamsville, Tennessee in the early 60s, primarily through bonking people with a stick. Directed by Kevin Bray, this most recent iteration stars Dwayne Johnson credited solely as The Rock, back when he still had hair. I don't know what it is, but there's something so disturbing looking at this. Like, I mean, he looks fine with his little buzz cut, but it's unnatural, you know? It's like some uncanny valley shit. I'll be honest, I was actually pretty excited to rewatch this because I saw it as a kid and I remember it being pretty enjoyable. Let's see if that enthusiasm remains. We open with The Rock very obviously coming home after a lengthy stint with the US military. How do I know this? Well, he's carrying his bag all slung over one shoulder like a cool kid. He's clearly too tough to call an Uber and it's scored with this song. Not On his walk, we get a feeling for the hometown he's coming home to, and boy, is it rough. Boarded up buildings, the lumber yards closed, he sees this interaction. Here you go, Rox. Thanks, man. See you tomorrow. I don't know what it is, but the way the drug dealer says See you tomorrow. is so funny to me. Anyway, his journey finally comes to a close at his childhood home, and this is where we learn two things. Firstly, the Vaughn family is a giggly bunch. A little? <laughs> 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 and second, they apparently don't tell each other shit. Like, sure. What is this? Maybe the sister leaves out of her letters that she started a whole ass new career as an EMT or whatever that uniform's for. But how long did you leave? How long do we have you? For good. He didn't tell him he was being discharged. This man just showed up on his parents' door like, good news, mom and dad. I live here now. Then we get family dinner as they all reconnect. Well, I was planning on working at the mill. Your letters never mentioned it was closed. Oh, it never came up? I'm shocked. After our family reunion, The Rock decides to rebuild the porch because he's a big strong man and that's what big strong men do when his old pal Johnny Knoxville pulls up for yet another joyous reunion. It was at this point that I realized, shit, I was thinking of the rundown. Anyway, Mr. Knoxville chooses a rather unique approach to reconnecting with an old friend. Within the span of 72 seconds, he says hello, asked when The Rock got back in town, told him he joined a band, started a party, became a drug addict, and then went to prison for B&E. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be able to open up to friends like that free of judgment, but holy shit, man, he just got back. Continuing the catch up, Johnny gets the gang back together and they go to the town casino, an insidious figure in the story to say the least. You see, it was opened by this man, the obvious villain of the story, after he closed the mill, mere months after taking over from his dead dad. Also, he drinks and drives. Now, I'm sure I don't have to explain to you why a casino is bad news. Casinos mean gambling and gambling means sin, so there's little mystery as to where this town started to go downhill. I mean, shit, they have these things. This town's going to hell. Anyway, his dumbass friend loses a bunch of money at the craps table, but what's that? The Rock spots the dealer switching dice. Don't nothing get past this man. There's an altercation which, okay, I'm on your team here, Mr. Rock, but then the tension escalates. Chris, why don't we just let it go? Yeah, Chris, you just got back in town. No need to do anything rash. Just give me my money. Hey. <laughs> Damn it, Chris. So yeah, shit goes way off the rails and strangely, The Rock gets his ass kicked. And frankly, all of this feels like a bit of an overreaction. First with The Rock going all expendables on casino security. And now they've got him held to some kind of table in the back room or something. And holy shit, is that a box cutter? What the fuck? He's later found by a trucker after being left for dead in an apparently at least occasionally busy street. There's no isolated wilderness in Washington. Everybody knows that. And we cut to the hospital. While the family all crowd into the waiting room waiting for news on his condition, the local sheriff shows up acting real sketchy for some reason. I'm just doing my job, Michelle. Okay, I understand how you feel. 
but we still don't know yet who started all of this. Didn't they carve him up with a box cutter? But due process can wait, cause it's time to bring the rock home. Q recovery montage. This is a pretty cut and dry recovery, but it is worth mentioning that at no point during it do they draw any attention whatsoever to the box cutter of it all, which I feel like if I had been carved up, I would talk about every day. Man's just doing crunches like a hot D1 recruit. Nobody points out that his abs are literally shredded. Thank you, thank you, yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Eventually, the rock's well enough to resume construction when Buck pulls up to attempt to settle things, even admitting that his goons they got a little rough. I mean, dude, they used a box cutter. Why is nobody talking about this? So yeah, rich guy does the classic rich guy thing of trying to buy the rock off, which gives him inspiration to go back to our sketchy sheriff. He waltzes up into the sheriff's office and rudely interrupts this dude's phone call for no reason, which is simply hilarious. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hey, Chris. Anyway, The Rock's here to press charges. Which again, box cutter. But the sheriff lets him know that they did an internal investigation and now consider the case closed. But make no mistake. I'm not gonna let this stand. Okay, so we're half an hour into this thing and we're finally getting somewhere. It's a movie about an army vet's quest for legal justice with the help of his old friends and family who he reconnects with while he seeks justice through the proper channels. Battling the police system the whole way. Let's go. But wait. Okay. I was right. So yeah, The Rock's nephew has overdosed and not on no kitty shit. Crystal meth. Jesus Christ. It's around now that I'd like to point out that the kids in this town suck at doing drugs. Earlier, just before they went to the casino, the now grown ass men that all grew up together and apparently still live in the same town all get together to play touch football, during which some kids show up to watch, I guess, and they're just openly smoking weed in the bleachers. Even at 19, arguably my most reckless age, I can't imagine having the balls to do that, especially in a small town. So with that in mind, it makes a little bit more sense why they would just jump up to fucking meth. And yet they're strangely cooperative with authority. I never did it before. It's true. We might have kind of pushed them into it. Where'd you get the drugs? I'm not really sure where we got Stop. it. Stop, where? from the security guys working at the casino. Narc. The Rock, armed with this new information, rolls off in his truck and this music tells you all you need to know. It was around this point that I thought to myself and I quote, I'm starting to think this guy's a danger to himself and everyone around him. Anyway. My man goes full fucking daredevil on everyone he can find inside the casino in what might be called a celebration of assault and battery. Frankly, the only good call The Rock makes is choosing before he walked into the joint to swap his shotgun out with his trusty bonking stick. Shit would have been a bloodbath. Anyway, dude gets understandably arrested and in the following scene refuses a downright generous plea deal from his lawyer because he refuses to admit, I mean, plea guilty. I wasn't wrong. And I won't say I was. I mean. So we're off to the trial where we get a montage of people, <coughs> victims, giving both a violent and accurate testimony of his attack. The whole time his poor attorney's just looking more and more defeated, but like, can you blame him? Cause again, they're just up there telling the truth. So. You're fired. Your honor. I'd like to plead my own case. Why not, dude? So The Rock stands up and gives an impassioned plea directly to the jury, getting objected the whole time, because, you know, he's not a lawyer, and appealing to the town pride. I grew up in this town. People used to walk tall in this town. Close enough. Okay, so somehow you've got people on your side. What's your defense? I was justified in what I did. Oh, he's just gonna say that he's innocent. Yeah, that tracks. And if you acquit me of these charges, then I'm gonna run for sheriff. <laughs> what? So let me get this straight. This obviously guilty man's gonna fire his representation, stand in front of the jury offering no evidence aside from I'm not guilty, and now he's gonna run for, oh, oh my God, wait, is it happening? That this Objection. never Sustain. happens to anyone else again. Mr. Vaughn, take your seat. Oh. I've gotta admit, the way the crowd delays their sounds of disgust until he turns back towards them is a nice touch. Anyway. We find the defendant, Chris Vaughn, 
not guilty. Okay, now it's time for the sheriff campaign. Oh, there's a new sheriff in town. Now I think I get what this movie's supposed to be about. First order of business, fire all the deputies in town and then unjustifiably destroy private property. Then it's Knoxville time, baby. So deputizing Johnny Knoxville is an objectively bad idea, right? One of the first things we learn about him is that he's a felon who hates cops, right? But not to worry, The Rock's got a good reason. Ray, I need your help. I need you to take me to drug school. Cool line. So now our new hot cops begin blazing a path through the local underworld, trying to root out the town drug supplier, a process during which Deputy Knoxville kicks a woman. Please, I'm in Their criminal odyssey leads them eventually to Mr. Boxcutter, who they arrest after destroying his truck for some reason. This part's funny, though. <laughs> Shit's getting tense, so he sends Johnny to watch over his family and then settles in for a long night at the precinct. Enter Denny for another downtime with the rock scene. Oh shit, I totally forgot to mention Denny, but to my credit, she's not all that important. She's apparently some figure from The Rock's past that serves as like a half-assed love interest, as well as the personification of The Rock's positive impact on the town. She's introduced dancing at a peep show during the first casino scene, during which The Rock just leers at her silently despite having clearly grown up with this woman. Gross. And by the end of the movie, she's left dancing in her past and is safe and sound thanks to The Rock being a badass, cooking him dinner and shit like any good Southern woman should even though this movie takes place in Washington. Oh, and she does some running about, swinging a pistol around in her bra, so that's cool. 2004, what an enlightened time in cinema. Anyway, the morning after their sweet, sweet bang sesh, we get a quick glimpse at our sinister casino executive being particularly sinister. I mean, look at this cut. Sharp. And back at the precinct. I want pancakes mm. and eggs mm -hmm. and bacon. <laughs> It's go time, baby. Trump for a Trump. Turns out The Rock has had a point this whole time. The cops aren't just ineffectual, they're straight up terrorists. All the ex-cops and the old sheriff himself join up with Buck's goons and start shooting the station to shreds. Ah! But it's not just the police station, because The Rock's family's been attacked. Deputy Knoxville dropped the ball protecting the fam? Shocking. Although to be fair, he does get shot. Ah! Anyway, the next seven minutes was a fire fight! Knoxville jumps on some folks, Denny screams a lot, The Rock shoots a massive hole in the floor, standard stuff. After literally all all the goons die, The Rock sets off for his final confrontation with Casino Man who's holed up at the mill. Shocking. At this point, the movie becomes a psychological thriller with Damien Dark being all let's play a game and taunting The Rock through the building. And here's where the 2004 really shines through because somehow we're meant to believe that this man can successfully maintain an extended axe fight with The Fucking Rock. Honestly, The Rock kinda gets his ass kicked for a while. There's a lot of that in this movie, frankly, which is sorta nuts because we've become so accustomed to The Rock being contractual prohibited from getting his shit rocked. Anyway, WWE superstar The Rock ends up beating that one guy from season four of CW's Arrow. You're right, Jay. This does change our relationship. This is my town. You're under arrest. And that's basically it. That's the movie. He's probably blowing on somebody's dice right now. Cool line. So that's Walking Tall. Hope you're happy, radio. But wait, as is tradition for this series, I do have trivia. One, the way the old sheriff is described near the beginning as having died is the way that real life Buford Pusser died, which is to say, mysteriously. Two, the director originally wanted to update the big block of wood into a baseball bat, but there were objections from the Pusser estate, so they compromised by hand whittling the big block of wood into like a Flintstones looking club of a bat. Last, the chick in the car with the casino man during the headlight incident, that's the first appearance of How I Met Your Mother's Kobe Smolders. What a world. And yeah, that's uh that's the liar's guide to walking tall. Um thank you for watching, I guess. Uh it's been a lot of fun. This is where my script ended, so now we're gonna get real freestyly. Um it's been longer than I intended. If you enjoyed this, uh, subscribe, uh, like, all that kind of good stuff. Um, or you, if you really liked it, you should join our Discord, frankly. Discord is where I'm taking suggestions like this. So if you've got anything you'd like to add to the wheel, join our Discord. You can suggest it over in the departmental briefing uh, suggestion channel. And I might add it to the wheel. You can't hold me to this. We're also starting to uh, make some videos that aren't gonna show up on the normal YouTube feed, but we're gonna still post links to them in the Discord, kind of like a, like a free Patreon kind of thing. We're trying to, at least in sub 
subject matter, do what YouTube wants us to do with this channel, but we still like to do things like put all the ingredients of a, of a Reuben sandwich into a bowl of soup and see if it tastes good. So if you like that kind of thing, we're gonna keep doing it and that, that, that may or may not just kind of pop up in the discord it's 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 worth it it's also it's a great community frankly it's where uh you know it's where we spend most of our time and uh really good folks um this is sort of left field but if anybody out here is trying to also do some 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 content creation but they don't quite have the time to edit we do edit videos uh we're trying to we're trying to make some money on that side of things to kind of free up our time a little bit so if anybody out there has some video ideas but doesn't have the time to edit it hit us up. I don't know how strictly edited this video was, but uh, but I've got a portfolio that, yeah, fuck it, I'll, I'll link in the description. So, you know, check it out. Hit us up if you, uh, if you got some, if you got some editing needs. I'm usually better at this sort of stuff, but I'm kind of blanking on what I'm supposed to say. This was a lot of fun though. Uh, I'm definitely gonna do some more of these. We got some other videos in the works that are gonna be pretty cool. And yeah, thanks for watching. And as always, stop shopping at Amazon. Continuing the catch up, Johnny gets the gang back together and they go back to, they go over to the old, they go down to the, they go, they go, they go, they go, they go. Nice. Wow, this, it landed on walking tall. That's remarkable. I spun the wheel and it landed on walking tall. I can remove this from the wheel now. Hilarious. Casino security, casino security. I just realized I had the fans running this whole time. When Buck pulls up to attempt to settle things, even admitting that his goons got a little rough. Got a little rough. They got a little rough though. Oh, I'm so stupid. Yeah. The sheriff lets him know that they did an internal vest investor. Fuck, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Fuck you.